So Ted Meyer, <laughs> tell us, how did you end up on Modern Art Blitz today? Well, I, I ran into your lovely wife. She said, oh, you're famous not because you give a TED talk. I said, not famous enough to be on Modern Art Blitz. And she <laughs> said, you should be. And the next day you wrote me and she said, said, my wife said, embarrassed come, me. She, I didn't say that. I did not say, she said, she said, how come Ted's never been on Modern Art Blitz? He's doing all this stuff. He's a big shot. I was like, oh, geez, I got to get Ted on Modern Art Blitz. Okay, so you're on Modern Art Blitz now, bub. Talk about your art. What are we looking okay, at well, here? Well, before we talk about the okay. art, I, I want to go back to your, your last guest, because yeah. this transformative punk rock thing, because I have been to The Mask. I, uh, you went to The Mask? I went to The Mask. Wow, I'm impressed. I used to come up here a long time ago, and, and my entire life changed going to see the Ramones. My Where? first year, I was in Phoenix. I went to oh, Arizona Phoenix? State. Wow. And they, the first week I was in college, the, the Ramones were playing right off campus and I was like this good suburban kid and I, I went to see two shows, the 8 o'clock show and then I stayed for the 10 o'clock show and the next day I cut my hair, changed all my clothes, dyed my hair black and that was it. So the transformative punk rock uh, thing and then I used to come out to LA all the time go to the mask or there used to be the roller skating, I saw the dead Kennedys in the middle of the roller rink out oh here. Oh my god, and, wow, wow, and there wow. There was a lot of stuff. Okay, cool, cool, cool. What, yeah. year, what, years were the, what year did you see the Ramones? 76. No, nah, he's bragging now. He's bragging. I'm still alive. Okay. Got my hair. So, um, what? Now you're an artist. So I from am. there you ended up making art. What, I did. What are we looking at here? Well, you're looking at an image that I was born with a very rare genetic illness that caused a lot of bone problems for me. So, from the time I was a young kid, I always did artwork about being sick or or the situation of being in the hospital, what it was like to spend repeated time in the hospital. So this was a series I did right before I had my first set of hip replacements. And I was trying to decide, should I have a hip replacement? Because the only other person I knew with my illness that had had the hip replacement had had a lot of problems. The, the, bone, the hip had to be taken out and she was left without a hip for a while and in a wheelchair. There was a Ooh. new drug that's incredibly I, expensive. I don't know what I would do if I, without being hip. Oh, that, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I had to go there. Hipless, <laughs> hipless. So I, I was doing this whole series of basically self-centered, very Ted-centric work about what it was like to have these structural problems in your body. So this was the first one in the series called Structural Abnormalities. Oh. And it was also about the fact that I felt very pressured at the time. There wasn't, there wasn't a treatment for what I had and they were just starting to come out with this new medicine that might work. It was incredibly expensive, like a quarter million dollars a year. Oh, that's all. Jeez. So I did this whole series of, of images that were very compressed, stuck in a situation, very isolated. And all my work for years and years was always single figure, very isolated, not, um, no interaction with the rest of the world. Uh, but now, now let's see the next slide the next now slide. you started interacting with, with the, the rest, rest of the, the world. world oh there's a little bit <laughs> maybe there's a little too much interaction <laughs> if is drone box a family network <laughs> no Whew. we're live here streaming at dronebox.com it's january 2017 and there's an orgy going on what's going on here ted <laughs> so it went from being very isolated and yeah. single dark colors to doing more and more bright colors, more people interacting. So, so this was sort of the end result of a whole series of uh, going from two people to three people to four people. I wanted to make sure Elisa in the sketcher seat saw the orgy. So her, her next time you go to one of these orgies of now, you can say, you're doing it all wrong. Oh, it's like, I need to wipe the drool from out the corner of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, uh, so, so, so Ted, uh, what's going on here? How many, how many, how many people, do we know anybody in this? You probably do. Oh, jeez. Yikes. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't want to ask. I don't want to ask. But, but, so I started doing this whole, I, I went the other direction to have lots of interaction because for years it was very isolated. And I wanted to tell stories of, of people interacting. And I, and I really liked the figure. I mean, I, you know, when I was in college, I took lots of drawing. I can draw other things. But because of my health things and all, it just seemed... The figure is what I always come back to. You know, abstraction, not for everybody. Um, so so uh, how big is this painting? It is, I think it's 53 by uh, 30. 
fits over a couch. It fits over a couch. And the couch, probably not the optimum furniture object for an orgy, but a nice sidebar. So, so I live at the brewery. You live at the brewery art colony. And somebody came to one of the art walks one day and was looking at this painting. And it was, it was a couple that I will say was uh, very good physical specimens. They, they were, were good very, physical specimens. And they were looking, they were looking at the painting and the, the wife kept saying, you know, if we put it over the bed, then every night you can say, well, do that to me and do that to me. Oh, okay. So, okay. Was, so that would have been good, but they didn't buy they it. They didn't buy it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the worst. Okay. Well, let's, hey, let's move on in the slide, in, in the slide reel here. And uh, what, what's next here? So the next one is, I've gotten into being more of a storyteller with my art. Okay. And that that uh, deals with the next stuff we'll see. But so this is a, a painting about my parents. And my parents have both died. My brother had the same illness. He died. So I'm the only one left in the family. And I've been left with all the family photos. And I've started working those into the painting. So in this, this painting has, you can see, my mom's in there. My dad is in there. Uh, there's some writing by my brother, who was a, a musician and songwriter. And there's also some of my mom's ashes in there. Nice. So I, I'm trying to work all these things because I really don't want all the family photos landing up at the swap meet selling for, for five cents a piece. So, Last time I bought photos at a swap meet, it was more than five cents, but not much more. Yeah. So the, the so it's, it's a way to honor honor kind of where you've been. Honor them, and especially when I put my brother's writings in. If if they can land up on a wall and. 20 or 30 years after I'm gone, he's gone, somebody reads a sentence that he wrote that was part of a song lyric. To me, it, it, it. it kind of keeps us going. Cool. So what's, what's next? Come on, man. I want to get to the scars. Okay. This Here is we scars. are. This is what you're famous for. This is what I'm famous you're, for. You're getting all personal with us. This is a show about fame, glory, and, and the big bucks that come with art superstardom, Ted Meyer. You've become quite known for this intense series of yours. What are we looking at? Okay, we're looking at the first of my Scarred for Life series. So what had happened is I had gotten to the point after the new medicine was invented, it took away a lot of my symptoms. I wasn't in a lot of pain. I wasn't very fatigued anymore. And I didn't really know what to, to paint anymore. I couldn't do paintings about myself. So I was at a gallery in... Uh, Beverly Hills, I had some work up in a show, a gallery that's closed since then. And I was talking to, actually, uh, Candace Bergen and Henry Winkler at this opening. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, yeah, and wow. Uh, can we get them on Modern Art Blitz? <laughs> they have no idea who I am. But, but they the, kept thinking, maybe this guy's a big deal. They, they knew I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> but this woman rolled through the gallery. Oh, okay. And, I, and she, had on a, she was in a wheelchair, she had this low backless dress on, and you could see her scar, and this was in like 1994, 90, no, probably 97. And it was very unusual back then. It was pre-Iraq war. We weren't used to seeing people with blades and prosthetics and things like that. And the fact that, that this beautiful woman would show the scar really intrigued me. So we had a whole conversation that night about art and health and how our situation You ditched changed. Candace Bergen and Henry Winkler for, for, for this her. woman. I okay. did. And luckily for me, because it changed my life. Henry wow. Winkler would not have changed my life. Henry Winkler changed my <laughs> life in the 70s because he showed us what cool looked like. And you still have the leather jacket. I, <laughs> Fonzie's cool, not a square. Yeah, he is. <laughs> and he has a library card. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> so anyway, she and I had a whole conversation about art, health, and how are things life's changed. She had been uh, a dancer and then broke her back, but she moved to LA. She started working on a TV show as a regular character and started working with a dance company. And she kept saying to me, you need to keep doing work about mobility issues. And I went home and I thought, well, that actually kind of makes a lot of sense because I still wanted to do work about that. And so I called her up the next day and asked if I could make a print of her back to document what had happened. Because years before I'd taken a class on Japanese fish prints, so I knew how to ink up texture and skin to, to, to get a print. And it, it showed up very well, the print, and I started painting into it. And I showed it again at one of the brewery art walks. And people were walking up to me and they were opening shirts and pulling down pants. And okay. everyone was like, I have a scar. Let me tell you about now, my scar. Now the orgy painting did not get that response. They didn't start opening shirts and pulling down pants. No, but I got a lot of uh, people pointing and the partner going, yeah, I don't want to know about your history. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I started, uh, people kept coming up and telling me about 
what had happened to them, and it just became really apparent that this touched people in a way that the paintings didn't. Yes. Orgy or not, anything. And yet, and they also kind of evoke classic abstract painting in a lot of ways. Well, that's what I, when I first showed them, I just showed the print, and it would say broken back, colon reconstruction, heart transplant, without the photo of the people. But because I wanted them to be seen as these abstract paintings that had this one-two punch of, you know, people walk up and go, oh, that's a heart transplant. But people were so interested in the stories that I started adding things into the prints to explain what happened. Like this woman, um, can, can we go back to farther so you can see her? So, so she had cancer in her pelvis. Oh dear. And, and if you look on the print, there's calendars up on the top left. Because from the day that her doctor asked her insurance company to do an MRI of her to the point where they finally agreed to it was 123 days or something wow. like that. And during that time, the tumor got so big that her pelvis had to be removed. And once your pelvis is gone, they have to take your leg out. There's nothing to hold it in. Oh, great. So if you look at this print, you can see there's the spot where the tumor was. There's the amount of time that the insurance company dilly-dallied and, and almost killed her. So now what I try to do is not just the color field abstract paintings, is to really try to tell a narrative, just like the painting with my parents. I, I want almost everything I do now to, to have a story to it. You know, modernism kind of tried to defeat narrative, but it's made its way back into art. Do you, do you follow these people after you, do you just do the scar and then no mas? No, I, I stay in touch with a lot of them. You know, by Facebook, it's easy. Oh, okay. But a lot of times whenever I'm showing their work, I'll write them and say, your work is up in New York, your oh. work is up in Do they say, oh, Ireland. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to fly. Oh, hey, I'm going to be in New York. I'm going to go see my... I have had people like, when they're in different cities, but I at least like to do them because I'm really representing their stories. Like this is a guy, the one that's oh. uh, on the back here. Oh, I'm blocking him. So this guy was in Iraq, lost his arm, paralyzed. He was in a tank that, that got hit by an explosive. He was stuck inside it for 90 minutes or so while it burned. Oh, He's, great. Uh, Jeez. And, oh. But look, look at how a, great this photo tragedy. is. It's his lovely daughter with him. Um, and so he, he's, this guy, I mean, look, I don't have anything to complain about looking at him, you know, I mean, this is... And he doesn't have anything to complain about looking at him either. That's what was amazing. I, so I did a series of veterans for a museum in Washington. Okay. And I had stayed away from that for a long time because I didn't want to seem like a carpetbagger, like I was jumping on. And, and you, now you've lectured at, to doctors, and have you lectured to politicians? I mean, what's going on here? No politicians yet. Not yet. So, so, so uh, but you've, you've traveled the world pretty much uh, just describing um, what these people go through, and yet the visual reminder is always going to be the strength of the art image, correct? Yeah, but when you see one like this with this, uh, with this image of this guy, it's, it's pretty amazing that what he went through. And what I was gonna say is, what's interesting when you talk to the, especially the veterans. So I, I did a series of veterans after my nephew came back from Iraq and committed suicide. Oh. And that's how I started doing the veterans because I didn't want to do them until I had a natural way in. And uh -huh. his mom asked me to do them. But like this guy, you would think this would be a very personal thing, but when you say to him, tell me about your scar, what do you think when you see it? His response was, I think of the guy who was next to me who didn't make it. It's, uh, it's not a self-serving thing like, wow. like you would think. This, this guy, even everything he's gone through, it reminds him of the other people that had it worse or wow. didn't make it. So it's pretty it's powerful. Been impressive. I'm just thinking of all the people I know who complain about things. Whenever I look at the scar series, it's like, got to remind, you know. Now, Ted, I've got a lot of scars. You never, you never did, you never did a scar. scar I did ask you once. You asked me once. I did. Well, when I came to visit you in the hospital after you had had your, oh, okay. your pacemaker, yeah. you might have been too drugged up. But I would I be was glad to do your man. They make it real easy on you to go. Oh, it's not so bad. Morphine. <laughs> oh yeah, it's floating in a cloud here. <laughs> hey, I like this. I don't want to leave the hospital. I know, click, it's click, nice. click. Yeah. So, um, so now you're you're well, and the medicine. It's Medicine's not a quarter good. million dollars a year, is it? it? It still is, and luckily, thanks to Obamacare, I know people hate it, but I am covered. I'm a fan of Obamacare too, saved my life. Yeah. What do you think, one last question, just so you can get in a good dig if you would like, or maybe maybe not. Are you or are you not a fan of Martin Shkreli? Oh gosh, he is a pain in the ass. But you know, that is the whole thing with the drug companies. If, even the drug I take, 
any other country in the world, it's ninety thousand dollars a year. Yeah. So he is he is the Trump face of a big problem. Of a big problem. The Trump yeah. face of far, <laughs> big pharma. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, well. Hopefully, we'll we'll uh, we'll make art in the next generation to solve that. Great. All right, Ted, thanks for joining us. Thanks. Ted Meyer, uh, if you're ever at the Brewery Art Walk, one of, I think everybody goes to your thing, right? Everybody. It's kind of like everybody. Times Square. Yeah. It's the, it's the loft to go to. But uh, uh, well-known artist, you've been written up in the New York Times and everything, right? I everything, mean, everything. He's, he's the man. So, so uh, now you can say you've done a TED Talk and modern art. You might be, our, I think you might be our first guest who's done a TED, anybody out there done a TED Talk? Ted's done a TED Talk. And I'd like to say, this was not a TED Talk where I'm talking to my cat. It was an actual TED Talk. It was an actual <laughs> TED Talk. <laughs> we'll be right back with our next guest. Show the sketch. Oh, we got to show the sketch. Oh. Oh my God. Wow. Put it, put it up there. Zoom in on our from the sketcher seat. I'm sorry, I forgot about it there. Oh, get it. Yeah, I don't. There's. Hey, the, it goes the opposite direction. Yeah, you get, you get a little. You get a little. Sil- That's oh, great. I like the silver one too. Yeah. All right, from the sketch your seat, intern Eliza has sketched Ted Meyer, and we'll be back right after this.